Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and today I want to chat with you guys a little bit about the concept of bad exercises versus simply a bad application of an exercise. Because there are people out there who say there really is no such thing as a bad exercise, and I don't know if that's actually really true, but I do understand what they're trying to say. And I'll give you guys a perfect example. Let's take an example of something that got made popular purely due to YouTube purely due to strap on destiny he is responsible for its popularity uh, became really popular again for a little while and, and a few people are finally cutting it back out realizing it's really silly and that's the above the knee rack pull right the above the knee rack pull now numerous experts have came out and said it's a horrible exercise terrible exercise not even good for traps all that stuff that's the closest thing i would define to being a bad exercise for a whole host of reasons right and all these guys who say well, my traps blew up on it you ever notice none of them have big traps and they can't because it's not a good exercise for that purpose. It's terrible in terms of stimulus to fatigue, right? But here's, here's the question. Is it a bad exercise or is it a bad exercise for strength or hypertrophy? What? Because that would be a bad application of that exercise, right? An exercise that produces a very high amount of fatigue versus low training stimulus probably isn't good for either one of those. Is it a useless exercise, though? No. You want to know what makes it useless? The fact that people put straps on with it. That's a bad application of an exercise, right? They're using straps. Well, when you think about it, what does this exercise have the potential to be really good at? Building your grip. Building your grip. In fact, if you want to talk about an exercise that has the potential to challenge your grip enormously, well, I mean, actually doing bands, banded deadlifts like I'm doing will actually work just as good for that, if not more so, for obvious reasons. But you're taking a weight that you are incapable of deadlifting, right? And because it's a limited range of motion and you're just squatting it up, you're not deadlifting it up. No muscle in your entire body has to work through the full range of motion, but your grip would struggle to maintain it. Your grip would struggle to maintain it. It's a phenomenal grip training exercise. Phenomenal grip training exercise. Like if you were trying to build a monstrous grip, it could be a valuable tool. Now, we could argue that if you had other options, it might not be a good choice. Why? Because we have farmer's carry. We have grip implements. I mean, take, take what I have available just in my home gym for, for grip training. I have all these band deadlifts. That's a big part of my grip work. I do farmer's walks, so loaded carries with farmer's walk sandals. Have a pair. I have two different sets of pinch blocks for grip training. I have a lot of grip training equipment. So for me, it would be silly because you have to load up all those plates. It risks damaging equipment. But... Is it still a good grip training exercise? Yes, because if you're a 500 pound deadlifter who could with straps probably pull a thousand pounds on the above the knee rack pull, but you put 600 on it and just pull for three inches off the, off the pins, would that be a good grip training movement? Of course it would. So it has a value, it just is not good for building traps which a lot of guys try to claim it is. So that's oftentimes what we're talking about. We can talk about the same thing with saying, well, a lot of guys say, well, a lot of these, uh, you know, pull-ups or rows or whatever, I try to focus on the squeeze at the top to get isometric strength. And I would say, well, that's a bad use of that exercise because there's better things out there for the same goal. It doesn't make them bad exercises. They're just not great exercises for developing isometric strength while contracting the scapula together. People would say, why? Because we have deadlifts for that. Deadlifts are better. Deadlift is way better for that same role. You can use more weight and you're already in the isometric position. See, that's the problem with isometric training. I'm not against isometric training. Isometric training is its own form of training. It has merit. But a lot of times we could look at certain lifts and say, is there a better lift for training that same isometric strength that's not a dynamic movement? Because if you're moving a joint 
through a range of motion, then contracting it, you're forced to use less weight on the dynamic portion of the movement, which has its own hypertrophic potential. And that's not necessarily particularly good isometric training. Because if it's a weight that you can move through the full range of motion, you're not going to get the isometric contraction you always want. So, for example, let's say you can deadlift 500 pounds. Well, that means you can probably do rep work with 400. But you, you can do Romanian deadlift or something like that with a fair amount of weight also. How much can you really row? How much could you really isometric row? How, hard, how much weight could you really pull in a, a lat pull down or a cable row against that? Not very much. Not in comparison. Because you have to pull it into that position. Whereas in those others start in a dynamic position. And if you do any more amount of training volume, you're getting some great isometric training of retracting the scapula. Right? You're getting some good training of it, which will carry you over to your bench and your, your squat and everything else. So when we talk about bad uses of exercises, this is, this is what I mean. It's not to say that these are bad concepts or they're bad exercises. Does anyone out there think that rows, or even really realistically, I mean, I don't like cables and machines for the most part, but do you think a cable row is a bad exercise? I don't think it is. It's a bad exercise if you decide that it's the best tool you have available for training an isometric contraction of your lats in the middle. Because there are exercises that already put them under more isometric stress that are common exercises that do the same thing more effectively. Now, the argument could be made, well, you can only do so much deadlift volume. That's right. That is true. Do you start doing speed pulls? You see, I see me doing here. All these speed pulls you see are from a single workout. This isn't looping the same set. I do 20 of these every week. Uh, you can use these different exercises in different ways. And, and I think it's, it's what it comes down to is people try to misuse certain exercises. And they can take an exercise that might have a valid application and they use it incorrectly. And thus they turn it into a bad application of an exercise in which we would call a bad exercise. Right? We might look at that and say, well, the knee rifle is a bad exercise. If used for anything other than grip training. Great grip exercise. Well, say you throw straps on it, it becomes a crappy exercise, right? You're kind of getting way uh, rid of one of the few things it does well. Getting rid of one of the few things it does well. So that's what we're talking about, getting the most out of our exercises. I mean, we could say the same thing with, with the deadlifting and the rows. But you know what I would argue? I mean, we can make the argument that even the deadlift might not be the best if you really wanted to train an isometric contraction of a muscle, you just set yourself up in a rack and have some way you could push against pins or pull against pins, hopefully on a rack bolted down, just do the isometric contraction on the range of motion. Now, people will say, but couldn't you do that with a rack pull? No, because there's no isometric contraction. It's just a pull. Right? You're not isometrically contracting against anything other than some of your core muscles, right? Some of the stabilizers. Your traps aren't isometrically contracting. Your, your, your mid traps and your lats are isometrically contracting on a deadlift, but not, not an above the knee rack pull. So another way that I would word a lot of this of what we're doing is that when we're selecting exercises to do for different things, put a little thought into these things and ask yourself, is this not, is this a bad exercise? It's ask yourself, is this the best exercise for me for my intended goal right now, All right? Is this the best exercise I can come up with for what I'm doing right now? And if the answer is no, then you probably need to do something else. You need to find out what is the best exercise for that purpose. Now, you might have stalled on the best exercise and you need some other variation, that's fine. But that means it's no longer the best exercise. You might be limited by your equipment that you have available. All right? I mean, we could look at something and say, man, a reverse hyper is the best exercise I could do for that right now. Well, what if you don't have access to one? Well, maybe you could uh, do some really, really high rep good mornings with just bands draped over an empty barbell. And that would replicate some of the effect you get from a reverse hyper. Not all of it. Might be the next best thing. I came up with a client 
who needs something like that. I have a client who would really benefit from a reverse hyper. He doesn't have one. And he trains at home. He's got a barbell and a rack and band pegs. He can do that instead. And then he can hang a weight around his waist and, and hang from a chin-up bar, hang from a pull-up bar and decompress his spine to put it in traction. We can get most of the benefits right there. Sometimes we're limited by our equipment. But that's the question I would always ask people when it comes to this stuff of, instead of always thinking in terms of maybe bad exercises is, is this the best exercise or even one of the, the top three best exercises I can come up with right now towards this achieving this specific training goal? And that's the way to look at it. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative. And I will talk to you guys next time.